Hi, welcome to another exciting edition of Color Made Poetry today. Today uh, we're going to talk about love, we're going to talk about community. And so today I have a beautiful sister, been a friend of mine for many years, and the person of Sister Nia 2X. Welcome to Color Made Poetry, sister. Thank you. It's good Thank to have you, you here. Thank you for having me. I'm so yeah, it is. grateful, it's, excited to be it's, here. It's good to Thank see you. you in the place. Yes, indeed. Yes, yeah. indeed. Now, you're, you're a native of Washington, D.C.? Yes. And you've been an activist for how long? Oh, I would think uh, around the days of Angela Davis. I was what? Really, oh, yeah, I was really inspired. Didn't know what I was doing. Uh, she mm -hmm. lit a fire on me, or that movement went out and bought a big black bush wig. So I would say around 1968, uh, the time Dr. King was assassinated mm -hmm. uh, because I could, there was just a movement. You know that right. was taking place, and and I was in it. I just didn't know what I was doing, wow. but I was certainly feeling it. And mm. then as I grew older, I learned, and I'm still learning. Of uh, I was almost a baby at sixty, almost. I mean, but yeah, I was I was very young. But you were very young. Yeah, I was in middle school that they call middle school. I was right. in junior high school. Yeah, they call it middle school now. We yeah. had no middle then. We no, just junior yeah, high school. Junior high school. Yeah, and and mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, like I say. From there to now, um, mm -hmm. my eyes are opening up every day. I'm learning every day and doing the best I can to do my part mm -hmm. in the movement. Mm. But you know, um, the activist, I wanted to say, I was thinking about activism because oftentimes I call myself uh, an activist poet, poetic activist, you know. I can because, understand that. Yeah. And then another good friend of mine, um, Minister Kareem, uh, formerly of Union Temple, used to always call me. Uh, what do you call me? You used to call me the poet minister. And I said, brother, why you, why you call me the poet minister? Well, I can understand that as well. There are a lot of mm -hmm. people that write poetry. Mm -hmm. But in your poetry, mm -hmm. uh, if I had to analyze it, your poetry is so gifted. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's a talent. It's like you can sit down and write a poem if I say the mm -hmm. word tree. You can mm. come up with a poem <laughs> before the end of the show. I thank God for the gift. But I mean, it is, mm. it would be a poem that is mm. powerful, mm. that has a lot of purpose, that has a lot of direction, and that has a lot of truth when you do mm. your poems well, on astrology. Well, thank you, sister. Because yeah, he that's said. That's real talk. But, but brother said, brother Kareem said, because you teach through what you write. And I, I thank him for that. I said, well, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Because I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I never thought of it like that. You know, I, I just didn't. So he called me the poet minister. So I'm poet Danny Queen, the poet minister. <laughs> and I think it's a fitting description of yourself. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you, did you choose activism or did activism choose you? Activism chose me. My mother told me that when I was a baby, and I still do it today, mm -hmm. that when I walk around, I, I have my right fist balled up. Mm -hmm. and I didn't notice it. I didn't notice it until really? she pointed it out to me, and it's just natural. I think uh, I inherited the DNA from mm. my grandparents who obviously suffered under mm -hmm. Jim Crow segregation and of course the chattel mm -hmm. slavery so I, I think it chose me you used to walk around as a child with your fist ball though. I still do as an adult unconsciously really you know? yeah it's a very comfortable walk um, that's a sister soldier that come on now I don't even know mm. why I do it but yeah, if I had a different kind of experience with, with fist ball I had a girl from one time you sleep with a fist ball up like that I was like <laughs> Man, you sleep with your fist ball up like it. She said, guess somebody starts stuff. She was <laughs> like, Lord have mercy. Oh, my God. Come on, woman, I got here. <laughs> yeah, she was sleeping with her. She was right-handed, right? Uh -huh. But her left hand was balled up like that when she slept. I thought that was kind of interesting. Oh, no, I'm like, okay, I'm walking a tight. I better do right. I'm walking a tight rope here. She may not even have been aware. <laughs> aware. She's you know, unconscious. Of yeah. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> it sure is. It sure is. I was scared. <laughs> was she left-handed or right-handed? She's right-handed, but the uh, left hand. Left hand was red. Yeah, left hand was red. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, that's funny. I thought about jo Joe Lewis. <laughs> Muhammad Ali or somebody. Yeah. But but the beautiful thing is that activism has as, as well been a part of my life. So activism really chose you? Uh, I believe so. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and or we chose each other. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just me. It's just who you it's are. It's just and who all. I am. And wow. The DNA was put in uh, mm -hmm. in myself in the womb of mother and in father. Mm -hmm. So what were you like as, as a young person coming up? Uh, as a child, very mischievous. Okay. Uh, uh, you would say, uh, they would call it a daredevil, very daring. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, love sports. 
Yeah, um, you still love sports. Yeah, I love to participate, okay. but you was nicknamed in those days, but it was just natural. Right. But uh, Nicknamed how? How so? Tomboy. Okay. You know, I just love sports. I love baseball, football, mm -hmm. basketball, kickball, dodgeball. I love wow. sports. Um, mm -hmm. As a student, mm -hmm. class clown. Mm, you know, okay. <laughs> um, and I only did that to, if I couldn't attention. get a, yeah, just to get attention. Yeah, kids do that. You know, people would be laughing, mm -hmm. so that's how I would get through the class. Grown-ups do it, too. We got somebody in the White House who's, who probably was a class clown. Still clowning, but anyway. That's a sick man in the White House. <laughs> Donald J. Trump is Ooh. a very sick um, man with power, the, you know, at his disposal in my You know, He's very sick. Most people call him the uh, commander-in-chief. I well, call him the lion chief. I'm, I'm not kidding. He's, <laughs> but anyway. He has a problem. Yeah, you know, yeah. And well, by him sitting in the seat of power, mm -hmm. that problem was manifested this week. He says there were em he said it was imminent danger mm -hmm. of why last week the missile uh, hit, what was that, Iran. Mm -hmm. But as of today, January 11th, mm -hmm. there's been no proof of the imminent danger. I mean, well, what is the imminent danger to uh, to your toward what you did and your actions? Well, he don't prove anything. He just says a bunch of stuff. So I like to dedicate this poem to him, to our president, quote unquote. <laughs> Stop lying. If you tell one lie, you got to tell two. Then before you know it, lying is second nature to you. When there's no foundation of truth on which to stand, live in a lovable lie is like walking on quicksand. And there ain't no way naked truth can ever fly on the wings of a well-dressed lie. A lie told in the truth is not something you can defend because truth cuts to earth will always come up again. So let the truth be your guide and your lust to tell a lie, and you will find that you can stop it if you try. For if you lie to yourself, you'll lie to any and everybody else. And there ain't no way naked truth can ever fly on the wings of a well-dressed lie. Because if you tell one lie, you got to tell two. Then before you know it, lying is second nature to you. Stop lying. <laughs> You, you must stop. know that man. And I mean, if you listen real good, you hear the whole country, the whole world applauding. Oh. You obviously know him, you know, and um, wow. he's not going to heed good advice, but that, that's him all the way. Yeah, that's, that's what it liar. is. He's a liar. He's a horrible liar. And you know, I, I've written um, like probably like 10 pieces on him, and so, you know, people on the internet, you know, like lady said, oh, what gives you the right to say that? What do you mean what gives me the right to say it? Well, gives them the right to say some of the things they need to eat. That's one of the great things about living in this country. You, we have so-called freedom of speech. It's limited, mm -hmm. but we have much more than many other countries. So you have the right to yeah, so have well, an opinion. If you don't like it, don't read it. I don't need You're your permission right. to say what I said. And I've written oh, a lot of them. I mean, the first one I wrote was called uh, The Trump Card, Trump Nation. Oh, God, there's so many of them. All trumped out. Uh, I can't even think of lying, lying on the truth. I mean, it's, it's a lot. Of, well, this is your interview, but I yeah. do have a question. Mm -hmm. How long does it take you, for an example, to write the poem you just read? How long, at, what's your average? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, it depends, depends on how I feel about it. I do mm -hmm. a lot of research. Yeah. I see. But I'm the interviewer here. Don't be asking me nothing. No, I was just curious. <laughs> no, this mess up with you. You had it with the liar. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, no, I'm just playing. But you didn't no. answer the question. Oh, how long does it take? How long did it take to write that one? Oh, that one? Oh, that one's old. Girl, I wrote that one. That was the baby. Let me see what year that was. Uh, I don't know. That's an old piece, sister. Let's see. That was 96. Oh, uh, that oh, was so you was writing about him way back Well, there. no, this ain't about him. This ain't anybody who lied. Oh, well, he okay. Said, <laughs> well, he seemed so to be lying funny. the most. Got you. Okay. <laughs> But it I was had, so fitting. I thought it was, you yeah. know. Yeah. But I have a piece that uh, I would read it on him, but it's, it's a little long, and I don't want to take too much time because I'm here to you know, talk about you and your life and your activism. Yes, now, sir. Now, for you, you're also an entrepreneur. So Absolutely. out of your activism came entrepreneurship? Uh, that's correct. Around the 1980s, I was so blessed mm -hmm. to meet our mutual leader, uh, John Ray. Oh, John Ray, yeah. Eagles. That's, That's how we I met. met you. Yeah. yeah, John Ray and the Majestic Eagles, yeah. When what drove you to the Majestic Eagles? I'm, I'll tell you, Danny is so interesting. I got up on a Saturday morning, took my shower, and had the direction that I was going to go to before I left the house. And the radio was on, W-O-L, mm -hmm. 
1450 AM. That's right. Uh, Kathy Hughes, and she had a guest. Wow. And it was a man, and this man was hooping and hollering. Mm. <laughs> and then when that I heard like him. him say, uh, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, when he said that, it got my attention mm. because I graduated in that middle school, junior high school. Carter G. Woodson. From Carter G. Woodson. The Honorable Carter G. Woodson. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when, he, when I started listening to this man, mm -hmm. he wasn't hollering. He was preaching and teaching and mm. talking so strong mm -hmm. about saving Dr. Carter G. Woodson's home oh, in yeah, Washington, D.C. Yes, I remember that. So wherever I w had intended to go, mm -hmm. the Spirit said, I got to go down there. You're going there. And, and I went yeah. there, met him, saw the crowd, was introduced to the word entrepreneur, didn't even know the, the word, word entrepreneur. Yeah. And I've been, he was, he is the man. John Ray, yes. That just unlocked. Again something mm -hmm. inside of me that I was unaware of. Really? Yeah. And it just kind of hit you just like that. When I went to that first meeting, mm -hmm. I continued to go, mm -hmm. and Allah, God, blessed me to continue to mm -hmm. grow because the seed was already planted. Yeah, yeah. And he was the one watering the seed mm -hmm. every time I went. I mean, I would be on fire. Mm -hmm. You know, you know how Brother John Ray spoke. Mm -hmm. You know, the intensity, the truth, and then he aligned himself with the mighty nation of Islam. Yes. And it just uh, mm -hmm. manifested what was already inside of mm -hmm. me, being unaware. Wow, that's, mm, that's a heck of a story. But, you know, it, it kind of like my experience in the sense that when I came to uh, Union Temple, you know, I met, uh, I was young, you know, I met a young lady in, in, in the club, was in the club. Mm -hmm. Try to get the Mac on. You know? Go ahead, man. <laughs> on the right. personal note. And I met this young lady, and mm -hmm. we became friends, you know. And um, I think uh, like a few days after that, and she asked me, she said, you, you want to you wanna go to church? I said, church? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I go, you a missionary or something? <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happened was I used to hear Reverend Willie Wilson on the um, uh, Liberation broadcast every Sunday night. I see on WYCB, mm -hmm. and I heard that, and if, and if I was home, I would tape it, because I loved what this, this dynamic person was saying. I never heard a mm -hmm. minister talk like that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so she, she had invited me to go to church with her, and I went to church with her, and it so happened that it was the same minister that I heard on the radio from wow. Union Temple, Reverend mm -hmm. Willie Wilson. He was mm -hmm. standing, he was preaching with his oh, eyes man. closed, mm -hmm. and I was like, what man? And then I saw the the, the uh, image of the black Jesus behind him. And I said to myself, what manner of man is mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow. And it's interesting because I've been there ever since. Um, yes. But before that, uh, been in the nation also, mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, uh, a deep level of consciousness? And he bought Mrs. Farrakhan at the temple. Come on now. That was I before did. I got there. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So you're teaching also. Uh, encompasses the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as well. Uh, no doubt. I mm -hmm. believe Allah came in the person of Master mm -hmm. Farad Muhammad, whom praises are due. Now, how were you introduced to the nation, Sister Nia? Oh, boy, now this. For those is, who may be watching, we're talking to Sister Nia 2X. This is a little personal. Back in the day, mm -hmm. I was like everybody else, influenced with the negative culture of mm -hmm. smoking weed, and I was out. Tell the smoking, truth. and uh, I went to a place in my head. Mm -hmm. I had always heard voices in my head saying, okay. you need to go to the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. You need to go see what they're talking about. Because the job mm -hmm. I was on was so crushed with mm -hmm. the experience of racism, white supremacy. Yes. Until this other voice would say, you should go to the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. So I went out partying, smoking. Mm -hmm. And I went to a place in my mind that I don't care to go again. Mm -hmm. But now this voice was amplified. Wow. Go to the nation of Islam. <coughs> mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going. Mm -hmm. And went down and haven't turned around. Mm -hmm. that was and, and in fact, when I went, Dr. Aleem. Dr. Aleem Muhammad. Dr. Mm -hmm. Abdul Aleem Muhammad. Yes. Was yes, the keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. And... I was so influenced by what I had smoked, I told myself, <laughs> okay. I need to come back next week. 
Wow. Not smoking. Yes. Because the the mm-hmm. lecture and the whole experience was so was so 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 wait oh a minute. Gracious, you were when you first went words. let me get this. So when you first <laughs> went, you were up in the mosque high as honey I all was, get up. I, I think I was the <laughs> highest person in there. The I'm pretty sure I oh, was. Wow. But he was preaching mm-hmm. and I told him this, Dr. Arlene, after that sermon. I worked my way up to him. He was eating dinner, Mm -hmm. and I whispered in his ear because Mm -hmm. the entire lecture from his first word to his last word, I was so high that he sounded Mm. like Malcolm X. Wow! I kept shaking my head trying to get Malcolm's voice out of Mm -hmm. my head coming out of his mouth, Mm -hmm. and so that's why I told myself, well, you need to go back telling me Mm -hmm. the next week, not high, yeah. To to see the effect, mm-hmm. and I did that the following seven days. Wow! He was preaching. He didn't sound like Malcolm X. <laughs> he sounded like himself. Right. But uh, again, all praises are due to Allah because mm-hmm. Allah had already put in us whether it was Reverend Willie Wilson, mm-hmm. whether it was the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, our mm-hmm. great brother. Uh, yes. Dr. Abdul Aleem Muhammad. Yes. We were posed to come through those trails and those trials to get where we are today, today. to do mm-hmm. what we have to do today in order to accomplish what we need mm-hmm. to accomplish for tomorrow. Yes. So that's how mm-hmm. I, well, I heard the teachings. Before? Y- yes, before mm-hmm. I heard Malcolm. His mm-hmm. first album. And when did you first have Malcolm? This was, I was in the military. Oh, you were in the military? Oh, yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, three how long years. You did? In the military. Now, put US a pen there, right there for a minute. So what was that experience like in the military? Very racist. Well, uh, still I, racist. <laughs> yeah, it was coming from Chocolate City. Yeah. You know, I hadn't been around Caucasians. Right I had there. been influenced at the early age of 13, 14 in black power. Right. And mm-hmm. when I hit the military, I was 19. Were you culture shock? It was a culture shock yeah. because I wasn't having it. You're not mm-hmm. going to just tell me anything. Mm-hmm. You will treat me with respect. respect yeah. I don't care what your rank is. I don't care. You know, because you're young like that. Right, yeah. You're full, full of power. Of fire, yeah. So mm-hmm. in the military, which I received an honorable discharge. Mm-hmm. You did. They asked me to go leave. I left <laughs> okay. uh, 11 months, nine days early. And they told me the biggest compliment you could ever tell me. What's this that? black captain they sent to me. And he said, they want you to leave because they said you are, quote, Angela Davis, Muhammad Ali, and Malcolm X in one. Oh, and you wow. couldn't pay me a better compliment. See, and I see. told him, I said, oh, so see, they know old. me. <laughs> and so I agreed to leave uh, mm-hmm. two years, 11 days, nine months, <laughs> fine, give me my honorable discharge. Because I was fighting them all the time. Mm. Told him I'm from D.C. I know the Black Caucus <laughs> all the time. I was writing them up when they were wrong. But anyway. You was writing them up. I was writing them up. I don't care what wrong. your rank is. You're not yeah. going to treat me any kind of way. Mm-hmm. And anyway, I met some other brothers mm-hmm. from around the country. Mac was from Cali. Other mm-hmm. brothers, uh, another brother was from Philly. Uh, brother from Alabama. And anyway, they were conscious. And we would get together and listen to message to the grassroots from Malcolm X. In the military. In the military. You know, on our free time. Yeah, of course. Because we brought, you know, our background Mm -hmm. into our reality. Yeah, we're in your military. I only came because Nixon was the president. (laughs) I couldn't find a decent paying job. Mm -hmm. And he said you was going to pay for my college. And I could travel Mm -hmm. anywhere in the world. And being a woman, when I came in, you did not have to go fight. Right, yeah. So this is, hey, I, <laughs> yes. Ice on the cake. <laughs> Take me to, but a year after, they changed that mm-hmm. and then made us qualify with the M16 weapon because the first year I went in, I didn't have to qualify as a woman. Mm-hmm. But in 75, I went in in 74, and I mm-hmm. had to qualify, and I was the top qualifying person oh. in my unit. I, I didn't know I could shoot. Mm, you know? They train you to shoot. Well, the best training I've had in the mm-hmm. military mm-hmm. is from the mighty MGT really? from the Nation of Islam. The mm-hmm. training I got from the U.S. Army, mm-hmm. there's no comparison. Right. 
to the training I received and continue to receive mm -hmm. in the mighty nation of Islam. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's a military structure. Founded yeah. by, yes, it's yeah. paramilitary. paramilitary. Founded mm -hmm. by the great teachings, the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad mm -hmm. and those teachings today with the honorable Minister Louis mm -hmm. Farrakhan. Now, the, the training, I just have to say, the training in the military, mm -hmm. is, is, it doesn't even fit in the shadow Mm -hmm. of the teachings from the mighty nation. Yeah. It, it, was the, it is the top training. Mm -hmm. That type of training, mm -hmm. uh, I'm still striving to achieve, but mm -hmm. I give credit where it's due and yes. truthfully. Mm -hmm. But it was an experience being in the military. It was quite an experience. It was 50%. I liked it 50%, and I didn't like it oh, okay. 50%. And that's why I didn't re-enlist. They didn't mm -hmm. want me to anyway. But I was going to re-enlist. <laughs> they didn't want you to re Well, I told them. I said, yeah, I'm but... going to re-enlist in uh, equal opportunity mm -hmm. because I fought them the first three years. Mm -hmm. I said, y'all, we couldn't wear cornrows. Why not? This is did they, What did they say when you said why not? They didn't give you um, any reason? Some about some legitimate. regulation and look, I said, I know what I need to do. Go into equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so they put something in my record mm -hmm. that disqualified me mm -hmm. from being able to re-enlist and go in that school. And mm -hmm. I'm 19 and 20, and I'm saying, oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. The Vietnam War is over because I'm a Vietnam era vet. Mm -hmm. I didn't see combat. That makes right. you an era vet. And I said, oh, the war is over, but this is a race war. I'm finding Still that out fighting the war. at 19, 20, and Still 20. Fighting the Take war. your mm. army. You know, I'm about sick mm. of y'all anyway. You just make sure <laughs> you get my honorable discharge. I had that kind of D.C. <laughs> attitude. <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> so you was a rebel. Even then, you better be. Mm -hmm. You should be today. So, you know? in in terms of um, entrepreneurship, you, so you had influence from people like John Ray. Yes. And uh, what are your thoughts about the importance of entrepreneurship in our community? Well, that's a great question, Danny. Because the key word is important. Mm -hmm. We are the Walking Dead right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not sleep. We're not in a coma. Uh, the majority of our people, in my small opinion with the walking mm -hmm. dead because we know we need the unity. Yes. Many of us know we're spending $1.5 trillion uh, outside of the black community mm -hmm. yes. into mm -hmm. other nationalities. We mm -hmm. know we're doing it and yes. But it's a mindset. The, the mindset is not mm -hmm. ready to embrace unity. Mm -hmm. And this is the uh, next frontier for black people mm -hmm. to embrace unity that is inspired by the creator of unity, mm -hmm. which is Allah God. He made unity. Mm -hmm. It's like a marriage. When a husband and a wife marry, which is uniting, mm -hmm. and if you unite that marriage on negative ideas or not on true love, then it'll manifest. I think that's where Dr. King was going to before his, before his demise. Entrepreneurship and, and, and the African-American community owning and controlling your own community. I think that's where he was going. He pretty much said as much too. So that brings me to a piece I'd like to share and I'd like to get your response to it. Sure. Because you know, we were talking about all the billions of dollars we spend per year. I remember seeing a video a few years ago and it was um, it was called uh, 10 Billion Reasons Why Koreans Love Black Women. So I like from that point, I'd like to share this piece and simply entitled The Black Korean, The Business of Black Hair. They say you had no beauty to behold, but the big bucks in black beauty is black gold. As the talk of the town, simply second to none, sisters spend their last dime to get their due done. Those who capitalize on and supply synthetic hair own and dominate black beauty everywhere. To survive, we gotta do what we must, but black hair has made everybody rich but us. We spend billions yearly to make our due, to, we spend billion, billions yearly to keep our due razor sharp, and we don't even own the stores where we shop. But I don't blame them, but I do fault us for not working together in love and mutual trust. Our hunger for hair to them is not unknown because we wear everybody hair but our own. But the Korean could not control the care of black hair if the black consumer didn't take our money there. If we don't plan our work and work our plan, those who do capitalize on the supply and demand. If we know, Koreans know, a sister's hair is a crown. So they take the money home when the sun go down, the black Korean. 100, brother. 100. Let the church say 100. Amen. Amen. I mean, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. You know, yeah. it, it speaks for itself. Looking at that industry. And I wrote it in 2008. And it's happening now. 
And it, probably it was happening then. That's why I wrote it. Yes, sir. But that's just one example. <coughs> that's just one example. There are many examples. And people say, why do you write that poem? Well, I have something to say. People say to me, well, when do you write? When I have something to say. When is that? Almost all the time. <laughs> the poem speaks to the work as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. because when you're talking about spending hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. billions of dollars, yes, per year. now you're into what I term, <clears throat> excuse me please, as an economic abomination. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's where we are as a people. Meaning? Uh, that you have 125 to 13% of the total population in America, which is black people born in America. We don't mm -hmm. make up a lot. It's mm -hmm. 12 to 13. Percent, yes. And this group is spending 1.5 billion with Hispanics, with Orientals, with Caucasians, with all other nationalities, mm -hmm. and boycott the 12 and 13 percent mm -hmm. of ourselves. We, we make excuses. We hold ourselves uh, mm -hmm. at, at a degree that if a business makes a mistake, mm -hmm. you know, it's like we're unforgiving. Yes. And then we have the tendency to go out and get others, and then we pour, pour a little salt into our mm -hmm. statement to make sure why you and mm -hmm. you shouldn't go. And this type of sabotaging mm -hmm. behavior, you know, is a mental condition. We don't realize oppression. it's a mental, it and you know where it comes from. Oppression, yeah. It comes from the residual effect of chattel slavery, yeah. Jim Crow, segregation. Mm -hmm. This is the chattel effect of it, uh, yeah. that, yeah, that we are mm -hmm. uh, seeing today. What did Doctor uh, um, Doctor Woodson say? Uh, he said, "If you control a man's mind, you don't have to worry about his action." He said, "If you can you control." Woodson. The thinking. Yes. If if a man can control your thinking, thinking. he doesn't have to worry, worry about, about your the, actions. Your actions. Yes. And of course, we know Dr. Carter G. Wilson. And that's from this book, um, the Miseducation of the Negro. Yes, sir. Classic book. Go get it, y'all. Yes, he wrote sixteen books, and yes. that is the book that is still that's selling. That's a flagship. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, today, it is indeed. And he is the father of Black history. Yes. And just that statement alone. alone yes. Keyword. Oh thinking. Mm -hmm. This is what is being attacked on black people today. Mm -hmm. You really believe your thoughts are your thoughts and you should believe that, but mm -hmm. they are so influenced by the system yes. of our great mm -hmm. late teacher, mm -hmm. Dr. Francis Cress Wells. You better come on now. And, and our yeah. thoughts from, yeah, ISIS from, papers. from oh, her ISIS. teacher, uh, mm. Brother so Neely Fuller, Fuller Jr. 89 years old. Yes, sir. Now. That uh, racism and white supremacy is a system. Not only is a I'm system, but the most dominant system mm. in, in the, the world. world. Yes. And without and the most unjust system in the world. Well, it is unjust. Yeah. yeah it yeah. dominates the Everything. nine areas yeah. of people's activity. Mm -hmm. And to go back to your doctor, nine King areas: point, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Yes, sir. And I called her radio show one day. Mm -hmm. uh, well, she was being interviewed, and I asked her about health and why mm -hmm. health wasn't put into the areas of people's activity. Oh, really? And, yes, and, and her, her answer was health affects all of the nine areas. And mm -hmm. she, of course, is right. When you don't have no money, that affects your demeanor. Tell when you your education, everything. we can see in the other uh, principles of mm -hmm. that code. But yes. to go back to Dr. King, Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan asked us mm -hmm. to listen to the last three speeches Dr. of mm -hmm. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. before he was assassinated. And to your point, they certainly uh, apply to the economics. Yes. That that's what he was that doing. Capricorn brother. Come on. You know talking to that one. Capricorn brother. Uh, January fifteenth. Yes, sir was uh, mm, certainly wow. blessed be his name blessed be his name absolutely yes. he, mm -hmm. he i guess he thought about the the effect of the what was that the mm -hmm. 63 alabama mm -hmm. bus boycott no yes i think that was 60, 65. well well the bus boycott was one of was the most on successful money. well yeah but also one of the most successful boycotts but they were history. holding back yes capital they were holding back money yes, yes. and it worked it's always called the money 
They, they, yes, sir. They, they marched 381 days, days yes. in unity. Yes. With the same yes. cause and the same yes. purpose and understanding sacrifice. Yes, it's the sacrifice. heartbeat and you know what? of the struggle. Sacrifice, sacrifice. is the heartbeat of mm. the struggle. Mm. You know, Joe Masson always said uh, that, uh, sac that uh, uh, the difference between a moment and a movement is sacrifice. Yes, and I believe, uh, I heard Joe Madison say that it was Ron Walters from mm -hmm. Howard University. I hope I'm saying his name right. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Late, Ron Walters. Right, mm -hmm. and it was he, uh, Ron Walters, mm -hmm. who pointed out the the principle of sacrifice, mm -hmm. and then I just termed it lately that the same thing. Sacrifice is the heartbeat yeah, of movement. Mm -hmm. the movement. Yes, you know, without sacrifice. it, we are you're you're not yeah. going to get anywhere. Think about all the unnamed people who made sac all kinds of sacrifices. Well, we know the you know, people like That's a Dr. Good point. King and you know all the others, and and then you have people like um, I wrote a piece about him too. Um, uh, his name escapes me. Uh, out, out of Abba, the well-known minister. Uh, out of where? Out of uh, uh, Memphis. Uh, Memphis Shuttlesworth. Oh, okay. Reverend Shuttlesworth. I didn't know him too yes. much. I'm still learning about I mean, he, him. I know his name. Yes. Reverend, Reverend Al Sharpton uh, yes. gives a lot of props to uh, mm -hmm. Reverend Shuttlesworth. Because didn't mm -hmm. he just pass last year? He passed a few years ago. No, oh, a few, few years, years ago. Okay. It's been about yeah. four or five years. Oh, okay. He passed because he was a soldier. Come on now. Even so, and many people. And there are many people point, unnamed. Dave. That's a good point. Yes. The unnamed. French Ellsworth. Yes. And, and Herons. Mm -hmm. That. Ella you know, Baker is another one. Yeah. Know? And and the unknowns. Just many people don't know Jimmy Lee. When he mm -hmm. was on that Pettus Bridge. What was it? Jimmy Lee Jackson. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Pettus Bridge. Because that's another thing I do as an entrepreneur. Representative Lewis. I teach, yeah, uh, yeah John mm -hmm. Lewis, John of course, Lewis. Yeah, and of course. Amelia Boynton Robinson. And many people who weren't, well, who weren't well known at all. I teach black history to oh, youth. Oh, really? Yes, I teach oh. black history to So what's to that youth. like, sister? Oh, it's so rewarding because I'm still learning. Wow. You know, it's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's really rewarding because it is one of the missing answers mm -hmm. to the black problem, our mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. If you don't know your history, Yes. You really don't know how you got here, whose shoulders we're standing on, yes. and you don't know properly where you're going tomorrow. I don't care mm -hmm. what type of degree you have, what type of money you have, what type of education you have. If you don't know the shoulders mm -hmm. that you're standing mm -hmm. on and the sacrifices and that the blood, made. sweat, and tears and the things that they did so you mm -hmm. can achieve, Mm -hmm. then you're not in a good place at all. You don't know yesterday. Yes. You know, and so teaching black history to the youth mm -hmm. gives them an opportunity to get about my age, younger, and mm -hmm. be equipped with knowledge. Yes, that's the Which knowledge. empowers them. See, black history and knowledge, mm -hmm. knowledge is different from education. Well, yeah. Education is, is good. It's training. Mm -hmm. and, and it's needed. Yes, but of course it's, it's needed. But knowledge, knowledge, and like you said, education is training. It's yes. learning. Yes. Knowledge is knowing. Mm -hmm. And once you know, then you become empowered on what you know. And you're able to now tap into what the good Lord put in you mm -hmm. to know, to teach, you know, and move elsewhere. Frances Watson said that our, self, our level of self-respect, she said, should be like a laser beam. Yes, sir. That's what she said. Yes, she sir. She said we could do without self-respect, you know, all is lost. But when you respect yourself as a human being, yes, sir. and you make other people respect you, that's a laser beam. And, and you know, mm. our queen, uh, mm. she left us January 2nd, mm. 2016, Dr. Frances Cress Welsing. Yes. I'm glad you brought her up because... Blessed be her name it, as well. Blessed be her name. Praise mm. be to Allah. Mm. It is because of the work you and sister Sabrina Johnson to mm -hmm. continue her work, mm. to continue that work. work. Yes. And you're making history. Yes. So, now you're not doing it for history, mm -hmm. but it is black history mm -hmm. because once she passed, mm -hmm. then the open enemies said, you know, 
Yeah. Hey, that's gone. But no, no, no. The resurgence of her work. She has the disciples. Yes. And I call out I call myself a Wilson Knight. I see. And I said Absolutely. Dr. Galati, Dr. Galati said, well, what you gonna call her sisters? Oh, they're sister knights. <laughs> well, I'm a sister knight. <laughs> you know. And then you had <laughs> students of Dr. Wells and I wasn't a top student, mm -hmm. but you, Danny Queen, oh. sister so see, I teach black history. Mm -hmm. You, Danny Queen, my brother, and sister Sabrina Johnson, my sister, mm -hmm. to yeah, have well. the sacrifices that well. you're making. <laughs> To keep those well, classes. I, I thought it was important to. But but I haven't finished complimenting you. No, well. Uh, I mean, because it's powerful what you're doing. Mm -hmm. When you're making history, then others uh, tend to say, well, mm -hmm. what are they doing? They are continuing mm -hmm. the same classes that she began, the Crest Wellesley well, Institute. Institute. Black Think Tank. The Black Think Tank, mm -hmm. uh, the same way she had it. We even have the privilege and the honor. It was like going to every, hear her. It was like going once a month and laying on her couch. Oh, you mean when we when, when she we had was the here. sessions? Yes. How was it yes. now? Well, it's still like that because we got yeah. all the recordings. Yeah, <laughs> at least you do. It, yeah, but you the know. thing is, um, what what the recordings is like. We don't have to go by what other people said she said. Come on. We can hear what she said and what she taught. And this is why I teach black history. It is the most important part of teaching black history is to own it and control it. I was looking we don't for need other nationalities mm -hmm. telling the most important story of humanity. Because the story of black people in America in particular mm -hmm. is unparalleled. There's no other story to our knowledge yes. that compares to the story of black people in America. So when you are teaching that story, mm -hmm. you must be controlling. You mm -hmm. must ensure that that story is told truthfully and with facts, the good and the bad. Don't leave nothing out. You mm -hmm. must guard it and protect it. Mm -hmm. And when others that are not black want to get in, you have to make sure if you decide to let them in, that they follow the strict po protocol of being truthful and factual. And because we didn't do this with Jesus, mm -hmm. he looks white now. Well, yeah. See, we didn't to protect. Our thanks, past did thanks not to, protect. Thanks to Michelangelo. And preserve the truth of his story. So mm -hmm. now there's confusion and people say, Danny, what difference does it make? Listen, well, the truth always makes, a difference. makes the difference. difference. Well, if it because didn't matter, then why'd you change his image? The truth is the language from Allah, God. Now, mm -hmm. you may call him Jehovah and God and all of that, but you know exactly mm -hmm. who we are referring mm -hmm. to, the Most High God. The truth always no. matters. Now, there's a piece that I want to share, and I'm going to get your response to it. I call it my reparation poem. Yes, sir. And the poem is simply entitled, Pay Me My Money. Come now, on this there. is the reparation <laughs> poem. Not to say that uh, reparation is all about money, but Go it's, it's important. But it, it's going to take some. A whole lot. <laughs> uh, pay me my money, just so you pay me all that I'm due. If you have to rob Peter the pay Paul, that's on you. I'm coming from all ends just to make ends meet. So I'm overworked, underpaid, and dead on my feet. Don't want to rain on nobody's parade, but I want what I need, and I'm trying to get paid. And if you don't have it, no, I won't try and understand. So pay me my money, all of my money, just as soon as you can. I can't help but regret it because sometimes it's gone before I get it. And if I had what's due to me instead of just making do, I could pay Peter, Paul, and Mr. Bobo too. Don't mean to rain on nobody's parade, but I want what I need, and I'm trying to get paid. And if you don't have it, no, I won't try and understand. So pay me my money, all of my money, just as soon as you can. Pay me my money. Daddy That's a reparations point. <laughs> Danny Queen. <laughs> How is that for reparations? It's the absolute truth, brother. Mm -hmm. And one important point you said prior to mm -hmm. the poem, reparations is not all about money. But yeah. I mean, that was a great poem. Oh, Another oh, great thank poem. You, you can it stop clapping great. now. <laughs> no, it was just great. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with Because you, you speak for mm -hmm. people. You, you're speaking for us in the form of poetry. Yeah. You know, it's powerful. 
And it's true. I see why he said the minister. The minister. That's, that's what you're doing. You're ministering yes. to mm -hmm. the people that hear mm -hmm. you. Uh, but yeah, references are so important. Is very important yeah. um, to repair the damage that was mm -hmm. done to it's a, not a hand uh, innocent people. Not a hand up. We were innocent in our right. homeland. We were innocent. We were sitting around like we are right now. Mm -hmm. And somebody breaks in and still kidnap you. And then all of the other torture, mm -hmm. uh, profound, barbaric torture that went with that reparations should be given without even asking. Our history did not start with slavery. <laughs> that's, the, that's the part I had. That's the problem I had with American history as they teach black history. It didn't start with slavery. Not what, at all. I mean, not at all. So that's a fallacy right there from the beginning. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches that uh, chattel slavery mm -hmm. was 310 years. Mm -hmm. But as you're pointing out, the slavery of, I'm sorry, the history of black people, mm -hmm. you're, you're, how many zeros mm -hmm. when you talk about going back in time mm -hmm. to talk about the first born? Yes. Black people are the first born humans. The original man. You know, on this planet. The Honorable Dr. John Henry Clark said we lost a hundred million in the middle passage alone. Probably more. Probably more. He said we're gonna start with a hundred million. And and again, uh, to your point, our story, this is why we teach black history. We cannot leave out chattel slavery. And a lot of people, the young people get turned off. Mm -hmm. There they go talking that black stuff. But really, mm -hmm. they really don't want to feel and remember the pain yes. of chattel kind of slavery. Yes. They want to avoid the pain. The, mm -hmm. uh, the pain is a pain that you can't just put in words. But when you're learning black history, you're learning of Imhotep, Imhotep, uh, mm -hmm. the creator of mathematics. You're learning who created literature mm -hmm. and Come language on. and music and art. You're learning law. You're learning about the Songhe people, the empires of yes. Africa, the uh, mm, four so great much. empires, the Mali Empire, when black kings and queens ruled the earth before, in peace. Eons before slavery. In peace. The Moors. We talk about the Moors and the contribution of the Moors. Absolutely. You know? yeah. You're also talking about young people at the ages of 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. uh, read Edward Robinson's book, the journey of the Songate people, where 13 mm -hmm. and 14 year olds were doing cataract surgery, mm -hmm. uh, surgery on the brains. If you knew how important and how intelligent and how powerful you are the as young black men and women, then you would better, then you would understand better, rather, mm -hmm. uh, why the institutions under racism and white supremacy mm -hmm. removed the knowledge from us in school and only teaches his story. Mm, his story, than, come on. Yeah, rather than uh, the real truth of the matter of who you are, black gods and black goddesses. Mm. That's who we are. And mm. we're going back to that uh, when we learn our history and when we pay attention to teachings like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the great book message to the black man. You know something that's important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about that book because But I wanted to important. say quickly we also should remember to read. Oh, read reading books. Is important. Not yes, just read. your telephone. Yes. Books. So that yeah. you can write a book. You know, Dr. Watson used to always say to us in the Crest Watson Institute, she always said it's more important to read than to watch TV. Absolutely. Sister said that all the time. Yes, sir. So, this is a piece I like to share to one of my mentors as well. Um, it's called We Gotta Get Up. It's a tribute to the most honorable Marcus Messiah God. Yes, sir. My hero. When we believe in a dream come true, that's a scaffold to the sky for what we as a people can do. If we stand up for ourselves and build a mountain of trust, we can lean on our own helping hands to do what we must. With a sense of purpose of, and self-esteem from the heart, there'll be no bad blood between us to keep us apart. 
There's nothing the positive sense of self cannot do when you know who you are and where you're going to. And you know I love that brother Jamaican, <laughs> that leader, Ooh, Lord, because he gave us these colors, yes. red, black, and, and green. green. He yes. gave the black man and woman a flag. He said yes. that we had no flag to identify ourselves mm -hmm. with. So when you see these colors mm -hmm. given to us by the Honorable mm -hmm. Marcus, Garvey. Marcus uh, Messiah Garvey. You got on the button right there. Absolutely. <laughs> the red represents the blood, no matter where we are in the world. Mm -hmm. Our blood unites us from Mexico to Argentina to Africa mm -hmm. to America. And the black represents our people anywhere yes. in the world. Wherever and the we green are. represents the land we were originally from, which is the Asiatic at one Asiatic time. Asiatic black man. Asia and Africa were connected as a continent. Come on now, we know get your in history. <laughs> so red, black, and green given to us and the work that he did mm -hmm. uh, will always live if we continue to do the work mm -hmm. and to ensure that the work lives. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility yes. to make mm -hmm. sure those coming with us and those that are younger than us uh, mm -hmm. grab an interest in learning because mm -hmm. like you said dr Wellsing said reading books is yeah, more important, important than watching television now this is not television tell <laughs> this is the youtube this is a little different a door yes. Allah god has opened mm -hmm. so that we can have an alternative to knowledge wisdom power understanding and begin to connect the dots mm -hmm. as dr Wellsing would always say. Yes. And I have to have to mention our modern day civil rights leader, a man that I am president. I'm his humble servant okay. president rather. Mm -hmm. And that of course is that revolutionary <laughs> Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton, who is celebrating uh Dr. Martin Luther King coming up on the twentieth. Right, can you associate with the uh, with the national NAN? Yeah, That's I'm his humble network. president, okay. humble servant president in mm -hmm. D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Oh, the, oh, the, oh D.C. chapter. The D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Virginia. DMV. Well, Northern, DMV, because okay. mm -hmm. uh, those are two large states, Right. the other two. But we want to invite and encourage all to yes, come out to Monday at the Mayflower Hotel. They can go mm -hmm. to National Action Network online and register for the annual prayer breakfast honoring Dr. King because Reverend Sharpton is the mm -hmm. modern day civil rights leader mm -hmm. working making a difference he gets the same threat carrying the torch he is definitely carrying the torch and we been carrying to, it for a long time he really has yes and it's an honor to serve him to serve the organization to mm -hmm. serve our city and in, in the DMV mm -hmm. and to continue to be uh, a part of the struggle, making the difference that makes Allah God smile. Mm -hmm. When you can make him smile, yes. you know you're on the right track. You know, sister, there's a piece that I like to share. I, I think that's important. Uh, this is the piece I wrote oh, a few years ago, 2012. And um, it's simply entitled, uh, Chocolate Rainbow. Shades of Black. I think I shared it at the meeting the other night. Yes, sir. And I'd like to share this piece. It was powerful. Mm. Black, white, brown, red, yellow, and tan. All shades of the rainbow come from the original man. The missing link to what we as a people lack is loving who we are in all shades of black. Mocha, sepia, sable, red bone, cinnamon, mahogany, pearl. Children of the sun living in a color-struck world. Whatever shade of ebony to ivory you might be, black is black. I am you and you are me. You can't possess the soul essence of somebody else. So to love and know who you are is to be yourself. Beyond our shackles of sick, of sick, color-struck shame, as a people, we all call it one and the same. The one drop rule will on the, always undervalue and demean the wannabes, the jigaboos, and every shade in between. Black on black love is so power validation, despite our brown bag, blue vein indoctrination. Uh, Intra-race prejudice, preference, and pride are reflections of a past that cannot be denied as a human rainbow with the one on our back, the power of self-respect comes in all shades of black. Honey brown, peanut butter, vanilla chocolate, copper tone, mocha maple, nocturnal rose, raven brick house brownstone. Whatever shade of ebony to ivory you might be, black is black, I am you and you are me. From ruby red brown to a black walnut pecan, 
lemon strawberry peach to a beet to a beet sand color tan. The missing link to what we as a people lack is loving who we are in all shades of black. Chapter Rainbow. <laughs> you should have known you was gonna get it. You know, it's it's just gifted. I'm just, you know I'm just of real. how you portray knowledge. And that poem and the others, they're mm -hmm. full of knowledge. And when Thank you, you look at um I heard Neely Fuller. Mm. Um, Lord, Dr. Was... Francis Cresswell Zing's mm. uh, predecessor. Yes. Uh, who is, and you know, who she is not... in D.C. today. Yes, and he's still with us, thank God. But you know, she never spoke without mentioning it. That's right. That's how you're supposed to That's do it. You pray do it. where it's yeah. due. Where it's due, yeah. But I remember him saying, I was listening to Carl Nelson in my car one day, and he made a point about color, mm -hmm. you know. He made a point about color. And when you talk about color, that is mm -hmm. the creation of the open enemy. Mm -hmm. It's the open enemy that has a hang up about color. And this hang up has come to our community. Mm -hmm. And now we, you're light, you're dark. So what? Yeah, you that's... come out the womb of your mother, you are bad. Everybody had no choice about are. anything. Embrace who you right. are. Right. This man, this culture has a, has a problem about color. They made a whole law with mm -hmm. segregation and one job rule and all that and stuff. All of this crazy That's why I had to talk about it. But I shouldn't have to talk about that. But, but black people remember we should not have a problem about color. Love yes, who you, you are. are. Yellow, black, brown, red, don't compare. Be glad yes. like the flowers. When not, you see flowers, yes. they all look beautiful. They're all beautiful. Together. The red flowers not trying to get away and the black yeah. flower is not trying to say that. Get away from that nonsense. It's yes. a big waste of time. time. And that's the point. Love of, yourself. Of, love yourself, whoever you are. Whoever. Whatever. You are. Right. Whatever that's your complexion. Whatever you are. That's their hang up. That's not our hang love up. Love who you are. Absolutely. That was the point of the point. That's why I call it chocolate rainbow, shades of black. Beautiful. Yeah, I should have yeah. called it color struck. <laughs> you know, they got a problem, and, and yeah. we just don't. Well, sister, let's talk in, in the last few minutes. Let's talk with your business and um, and and uh, what type of business it is and and that type of thing. Well, again, uh, we do black history for the youth. Okay. Ages 5 to 18 can mm -hmm. come in, and uh, there are four requirements, and... We'll teach any student. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what your nationality mm -hmm. is, but so we're you, not going to tiptoe through the tulips. We're going to tell the <laughs> truth, through the tulips. Okay. and we're going to uh, bring the facts. Mm -hmm. You know, not to hurt so, anyone, but mm -hmm. you know. So you do tutoring as well? No, I don't do tutoring. Mm -hmm. I um, just hold those classes. Okay. Uh, of course, as an entrepreneur. Now, what ages? Five to eighteen. Oh mm -hmm. wow! And, and what made you want to get into in, into that? I realize that if we don't bring the youth, the mm -hmm. youth into mm -hmm. the knowledge of themselves, yes. then they'll be like us, lost. I'm 21, don't know the word entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So wow. I, why would I have an interest in Madam C.J. Walker? Mm -hmm. Why would I have an interest in people that uh, made major accompl accomplishments? Well, does that brother, the, the richest brother in the world was Mansoor, mm -hmm. I'm not pronouncing his name right, uh, Massimello in Fume, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not pronouncing his name right, but okay. he was back in the ancient times. He was the richest black man in the world, and I got it from uh, Hidden Colors. Hidden Colors, yes. Yeah, I Hidden Colors yes. is, has five Hidden yeah, Colors mm -hmm. now. So I yes. think this one was the first one. Mm -hmm. Every black person should see the Hidden study Color series. Hidden Color series. series. Yes. But this rich the richest man on the planet. Right. Yeah, he And he was so rich with gold. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. if we don't He had so much wealth he, he upset the economy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But and he I'm, he was kind. But he didn't yes. realize that's you know that it and people took What's advantage his name? of him. Um Yeah, I'm trying to Mas think of his name. Masa Mello. Uh, something to that effect. I yes. apologize mm -hmm. if I can't say his name yeah, right. I'm not just going to say anything. Yes. Remember, teach black history with truth and facts. If you don't know, you just simply say, I apologize. I'm not sure. Right now, I don't know. Yeah, and that's that's the beauty of, of reading and researching. Because that's so Yes, that's sir. So reading. Yes. If I had exactly. to leave with anything, if mm -hmm. you got anything out of this interview, if you, the old saying is, if you want to hide something from a black person, just put it in a book. So mm -hmm. let's destroy that myth. 
Let's read books so that we can write books because leaders read mm -hmm. and readers lead. Mm. Uh, before we have to leave, let, first of all, let me um, let me say something about my own book. This is my latest book. It's simply entitled uh, The Book of Tributes and the Tribute to Many, Many People in Our Community. And uh, it's a collection of poetry, selected poems by poet Danny Queen. And uh, it's on sale everywhere. Uh, but you can also get it through my PayPal. You can also buy it through my Cash App, which is Poet Danny Queen. Or you can call. Uh, it's 202 251 7743. And it's the book of tributes, the latest book from uh, yours truly. And I thank you. And I the last piece, to get it. last piece I'd like to share on the way out, Sister Nia. Yes, sir. And it's simply entitled Color Me Poetry. Color me the man that cried I am, and that would be my eternal flame. Color me poetry, for nobody knows my name. I am the middle passage and after. Uh, you are me and I am you and you are me. We wear the mask of America, something old, something new, for I am poetry. Color me the living experience. Uh, I am the lifelong proof. Color me the poetry of nothing but the truth. Color me a love child lost in the promised land. I am a poem for black hearts going to meet the man. I am not to be sold nor bought, so color me a scholar in the school of thought, for I am poetry. Color me the rose and the thorn. I am the timeless hopes of dreams yet unborn. I am for my people a portrait of pride. Color me the Negro who speaks of rivers deep down inside. For I am poetry. Let us lift every voice and sing of black and unknown bots of long ago. Um, let us, uh, of black and unknown bots of long ago. Color me a song in spite of myself that all the world might know. Color me poetry. For I am Poetry. Sister uh, Nia Twix, thank you for coming. Danny Queen, Danny Queen. Thank you for coming. Danny Queen, Danny Queen. And, uh, you are quite welcome. And, uh, and uh, are you going to make that announcement, brother? Yes, let me let me make the. You do it, sister. Go ahead. All quickly. right. To, uh, today and tomorrow, uh, uh, the, our sister, sister Dr. Ava, Ava mm -hmm. student minister, uh, Dr. Ava Muhammad, is speaking at Muhammad's Mosque number four today on a subject she's been going around the country speaking yes. on, and that is, of course, mm -hmm. separation. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we know, the nation is all, always, always been, serious. Yeah. You can call 202-506-6940 for mm -hmm. any information for Muhammad's Mosque number four. She'll be there tomorrow as well, Sunday. And uh, inshallah, God willing, I plan yes. to be there tomorrow to hear the latest in the tremendous effort, uh, the sincere effort to separate taught by Sister Doctor Student Minister mm -hmm. Ava, Ava Muhammad, Muhammad mm -hmm. who is the national spokeswoman for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Thank you, Sister. Thank you, brother. Thank you for coming, Sister. Thank we you look for forward having to having you back. Thank you for uh, having Sister me. Sister Lady Activist. Yes, sir. Uh, I appreciate you very much I for coming you and sharing. Well. Uh, there's so much we can share. There's so much that we missed. And uh, but well, there we caught a lot. Though. We caught a lot. I'm so grateful. We'll catch here. more when we come back. So. Yes, sir. Thank yes. you, sir. And it's all good. I'm poet Danny Queen. This is Color Me Poetry. Until next time, color me poetry. Love, peace, poetry. I am, I can, and I will. Peace.